though? Well, welcome to Woman Crush Every, Every day, day, where we discuss queer media, especially when it's black and especially when it's woman. woman. I'm your host, Allison, a.k.a. Al Wu. And I'm your host, Tang B, a.k.a. Sean B. Scribe. And on today, we're going to be talking about Harlem Season 2, Episode 7. But before we get into that, make sure you subscribe. Please. And it is still Black History Month, and yep. we are still supporting Copper House, y'all. It is a cannabis-friendly bed and breakfast and event space and if you want 10 percent off your stay make sure you use our discount code wce in so, the link in, in the link the in the description yeah. for copper house detroit yeah awesome so with that let's talk about harlem yeah yeah um all right so what did you think of this episode what was your favorite part uh, i mean it's a girl's trip episode so it should be like super fun but my favorite part was Quinn talking to her mom about her dad's depression. <laughs> mm, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. Probably the least party time of it, but the whole reason why they're there is to help Quinn out, you know, get her kind of rejuvenated mm-hmm. and recentered. Um, I think everybody has their own reason, but it was great to see one Angie called her mom and let her mom know, like, hey, something's going on. Um, that wasn't overstepping. Uh, perhaps, but yeah, I, I also like think that's a very this cheesy. <laughs> I like that. I think it wasn't. I think it was timely overstepping mm-hmm. because Quinn had already said, "I'm not about to fill that prescription." So the friends had already stepped in, like girls trip, and like see a therapist, like mental health is love, boo. And then they on the girls trip, and she like, "Yeah, I thought about the medication, and I was like, you know, I'm good. This will all be all I need." Mm-hmm. And she's like, "Okay." So we going to get back and you going to be the same. That's not going to work. Mm-hmm. Um, so I don't know. I, okay. I, I think it was with good reason. And clearly Quinn needs to address her relationship with her mom further because maybe that's not, maybe that's exacerbating things in a way. Um, but yeah, I, it was good to see them have that conversation for her mom to just affirm, like, it is okay for you to get a little bit more help to figure things out. And, um, and for her to see her mom for a moment, step up and maybe prioritize her and maybe prioritize plastic surgery. We don't really know, (laughs) but she fit her into the schedule. Word. Word. (laughs) Okay. Okay. I'll take that. I mean, that was a cool scene. I dug that. I, I, I was into the. The mom, daughter, you know, let's dig deep and let's have a real, real moment, you yeah. know, have a come to Jesus moment. So that's real. Um, I feel like my favorite part of this episode was Angie on the roof. Angie getting stuck on the <laughs> roof uh, while she was trying to FaceTime Mike, I thought was yes. absolutely hilarious. I usually try not to prioritize the non like big time queer characters on the show, but that one took me out. Uh, it was just really funny. That was funny. If I had to get an honorable mention, I thought it was sweet, the FaceTime moment between Amy and Ty. Oh, that was Uh, sweet. It was so funny how that camera kept shaking. I was like, oh, she's old. I see how they're trying to really (laughs) lean into, like, she can't even just hold the phone and talk. Um, Can't, doesn't know how to flip the camera back and forth. I I feel you, you, Amy. Hey, technology moves fast. I get it. <laughs> uh, I just thought it was a, a funny and sweet moment. So, yeah, it yeah. was. All right. So who was your woman crush? Um, My woman crush in this episode, I put myself. <laughs> I caught myself in the reflection of the screen while I was watching this episode because everybody was trash. <laughs> everybody was trash in this episode. No, Um. I yeah, I didn't. I don't know. Nobody really like, maybe Amy. I'd give it to Amy. Yeah. Amy's, yeah. Amy is definitely my woman crush in this episode. You know, she showed up. She was real. She just is, you know, tech illiterate. Um, <laughs> that, that gets loving. you hot, the tech illiteracy. I mean, turns it's just the rawness bit. of her. She's just mm, like, I play in the mm. dirt. I don't know what I'm doing on a computer. All I know is your, like, toxic energy makes me want to, like, have somebody to flirt with at night. Like, I don't really know what's happening with Amy, but... She's the most crushable for this episode. Amy likes toxic people. Yeah, that's the part that worries me. You know, 
She produced anyway. We'll get there. <laughs> um, there you we'll go. get there another time. <laughs> All right. Uh-oh. So, what can stay? What can go for you? Uh, okay. What can stay is definitely Quinn and her mom uh, getting to a happier place. Um, I think what else can stay is okay. What I have to address what has to go. This whole baiting us about Camille possibly being a cheater um, for the whole Hilarious. episode. I just feel like stop it with the baiting because you're not going to give us, oh, maybe Camille cheated. And oh, maybe like maybe maybe Quinn's like going to like have a vacation for her. And then it's all about her like chasing this dude like mm. that can go. Mm. Um, uh the transparency about mental health, that's that's what can stay. That's what can stay. Um, love that. Yeah. Okay. What about you? Okay. Um, yeah, I definitely want to echo Quinn's mental health, her happiness, some breakthroughs, all that good stuff. Um, and, yeah, and Amy, like, I think calling Ty while she's in Puerto Rico and just saying, hey, I need you right now. You know, it... it it alludes to there being more in their relationship. And I'm yeah. like, okay, yeah. I, 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 this can stay. I want to see more of this. Yes. Um, in terms of what can go, uh, I have ties back on my shit list. Who is Ty's <laughs> muse? Like, who is who is the person we don't that meet inspired that Ty's character? We don't want to meet them. You know? I don't know. I'm curious. <laughs> It makes me laugh to think about it. But, um, yeah, I, I don't know. Uh, and maybe it's the writers. I don't understand. I don't know. The way the way Ty got portrayed in this episode was particularly icky. And I guess it's kind of, maybe it leans into the queer canon a little bit for me. But Let's I think it, there, it's yes. definitely on my can go. Uh, Ty is just like, I don't know, all the things at the trip. Like, nobody even wants her there for real like talking about yeah, like that's weird i i don't understand why ty literally literally was literally dragged in this episode <laughs> like really no i don't like ty but the physical dragging of her across the beach was like on that like kite <laughs> that's too much that's too much and I, I, I just felt like i didn't want to see that I feel you. That's queer canon for me. I feel like this was a negative ad for Ty. Um, nobody wants to hang out with Ty. Nobody wants to do drugs with Ty. Nobody wants to do the sky, you know, um, kite with Ty. Nobody um, is there for her. She's flashing dudes. She's, it's just like, it's a lot of weird stuff. And it's a lot of like people telling her that she's old too old to enjoy herself and that's just a weird flex so this is like a negative addition to the queer canon to me yeah yeah of just like you're too old to do things you are not desirable anymore you don't get to have a good time you don't get to be adventurous you don't get to like push the limits of your body like what are we talking about yeah First of all, Ty looks great. She acts like shit, but um, <laughs> looks wise, like she's not out of here. Also, they're all athletic, so all of this stuff of they can't like like they're too old to do that stuff. What are y'all talking about? And y'all are getting plastered drunk all the time. So who is not able to like have Handle fun a with little them? cocaine? Yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> no. I'm just <laughs> I don't know about that, but I'm like, whatever y'all used to do, I'm sure a little dabbling in that is not going to hurt y'all. Um, so it was just a little weird. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. The way that Ty was played in this episode, I don't, it made me really think about how isolating it can be to be a queer person in a predominantly straight friend group. <sighs> yeah. Um, because... It's just the, it's not connecting. Like, I'm not seeing the synergy yeah. here. I feel like Ty is still very much in need of a different circle of friends whose energy is on the same wavelength. And, um, I don't know. You know, it's like, I, 
maybe Ty would be less shitty if there were people who, if, I don't know, if like if her friends kind of like were into the same things, but I feel like relatively, I don't know. It just feels like Ty is a, is a bad guy and it, it stresses me out because Ty is the black lesbian character. Yeah. Yeah. And that's get that get on my nerves. I feel it. I feel it. I mean, that's who we're here for. So we we kind of want this character to be someone we. I don't know like, if they have to be likable. I want to like Ty. I want to better understand Ty and how she ends up in these situations. I will say I think she has probably fucked up her previous friend circles. Mm. So if her old friends are mm. like booed up in relationships, staying at home, and the other one she fucked over, be like being herself, <laughs> um, I can see why now she's stuck with the mm. other group, this group, the brunch group. Yeah, <laughs> that's fair. That's fair. I don't um, know what Ty has done, but I just know uh, I just don't feel like she is really soaring with this group. Yeah, it is what it is. Well, we'll see what she does on the next episode. Yeah, yeah. So stick around. Yeah, until a few moments, y'all. Peace. <laughs> Peace. <laughs>